Am I, am I on now? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Kevin Kilduff, and this is my career journey to Don Bosco Prep. So I graduated from uh, Pine Bush High School in uh, Pine Bush, New York, and uh, enrolled at the University of Scranton. Uh, spent four years at the University of Scranton, where I got a, a bachelor's degree in, in biology and chemistry. And then from there, uh, as I said, mentioned a second ago, I went to medical school for two years at the New York College of Medicine. Uh, after which time, I went to officer's training school, uh, and after officer's training school, I enrolled at uh, Fordham University where I got a master's degree in administration and supervision in, high in, in education. Well, my whole life I wanted to be a doctor. Um, even from the time I was a little kid, uh, my family doctor at the time, Dr. Siegel, uh, used to show me around the office and uh, actually allowed me and my uh, dad one time to come and watch her do an operation, a tonsillectomy. And I was fascinated by becoming a physician. So when I left high school, my, uh, my goal was to become a doctor. And the University of Scranton had a great program in pre-medicine at the time. Um, so that's why I enrolled in the University of Scranton. And, uh, and from there, I went on to medical school. So I always wanted to be a doctor. I never had any, any interest or inkling that I would become a, a teacher one day. Well, finding myself at Don Bosco Prep was, uh, was sort of by happenstance. Um, I was driving to New York City one day, and um, I, I thought I might want to try teaching at least for a year. Uh, I, had, I had substitute taught the year before up in, the, up in Orange County, and when I went into the, uh, the office area, I was met by, uh, by Mr. Jim Scanlon, who's now, now Dr. Jim Scanlon, and uh, asked me what I, was, uh, what I was dropping by for. I mentioned I might be interested in teaching. And he had me sit down and talk to me for a while. And after about 45 minutes, he told me that we had a job open in, uh, in September and asked me if I wanted to, um, to start. So this was in early June. And I said, you know what, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yes, I'd like to. So the following September, I showed up at Don Bosco. Um, I wasn't even certified yet because I wasn't sure I was going to make a career of this. But Dr. Scanlon was nice enough to let me try. And uh, during my first year at Don Bosco, I taught biology and, uh, and physical science. Um, after that, I did find that I liked it and thought perhaps that I would get my uh, certificate. So every day, uh, maybe three, well, every day, every other day, for about a year, I traveled up to New Paltz, New York, to, uh, to get a master's degree in, uh, rather, to get a, a certificate in teaching. And I, was, I got a certified to teach uh, in science. And uh, after that, I started to teach science with that certificate. And, I started to do chemistry and biology uh, the second and third years at Don Bosco and eventually to teach AP Chemistry and Honors Biology, which I've been doing since. Then to you students out there, um, you know, I, I would say you, you don't always know what you're going to do with your life when you think you're going to. And as I mentioned earlier, I really thought I was going to be a doctor. But after I left medical school for two years, I, uh, I was sort of in the wilderness for, for a few years. Uh, I tried a number of things, as I mentioned before. I tried the Air Force. I thought I would become an Air Force officer. After that, I, uh, I enrolled in a PhD program at Penn State. I thought I would be a professor at college. And even after that, when I came back, I took a job with, uh, with Beckton Dickinson, figuring I might be a, uh, a drug, a, a pharmaceutical salesman. None of those seemed to work out, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't really until I met a professor from the University of Scranton, Father Edward Gannon, who had taught me philosophy. Um, and I called him once to try and get some, some concept of what I might want to do with my life, and he had me sit down, and uh, he said I should go on a retreat. My journey to Don Bosco and uh, as a teacher wasn't one that was, uh, was easily discerned. Uh, I went through four years at the University of Scranton majoring in biology and chemistry uh, with an eye towards becoming a physician. Um, I got into medical school after my senior year at Scranton and spent two years at New York College of Medicine. But it was after two years that I, I, I sort of decided that that wasn't for me. Um, and with some trepidation, I left medical school and sort of was in the wilderness for the next few years. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to do and certainly teaching wasn't on the list. So I tried a number of different things. Um, I, I went to, to the Air Force, uh, where I went to the uh, training school there for officers. Spent 12 weeks in officers training school. Uh, at the end of that, I wasn't offered a job as a, uh, as a pilot trainee. And they, they allowed me to, to leave the Air Force because they had a glut of, uh, of officers in the other areas. So I, I was given an honorable discharge and, uh, and left the Air Force. Uh, from there, I went to Penn State, where I, tried, I enrolled in a PhD program. 
um, stayed there for two years and uh, again decided that it wasn't for me. So you know, I'm four years out of college now and still not knowing what I wanted to do in my life. So at 25 years old, I had to try and decide what to do. I took another job as a pharmaceutical salesman with Beckton Dickinson, hated that. That left me at the age of 26, 27 uh, with, uh, with no sense of what I wanted to do. At that point, I, uh, I, I remember distinctly making a phone call to the University of Scranton where I graduated from and to specifically a, a man I, uh, I revered, uh, Father Edward Gannon, a philosophy teacher there and a great friend of mine. And he asked me to come out and I had lunch with him one day and uh, we spoke for, gosh, maybe two hours. After which time he said, you know, Kevin, um, maybe you're, you'd be a good teacher. And I said, what makes you think that? And he says, well, I remember when you were in my philosophy class, you had to give a presentation on Immanuel Kant, and you did a great one. I remember that to this day, he said. And I, I always said to myself, Father Gannon was thinking, that it, you know, you might make a good teacher someday. So I looked at him and said, I don't know if I want to teach. You can't make a living, etc." He said, you know what, think about it. Why don't you go and take a retreat? So what I did was I went to Morristown and took a Jesuit retreat for a long weekend. And when I came out of that retreat, I didn't feel that anything was different in my life, but sure enough, the next week when I got home again, I got a call from Goshen High School to be a substitute teacher. And I went in that day, I, I substitute taught, and then I taught at, at, War, at Warwick High School, I taught at Chester High School, and after about three or four weeks, I said, I really like this stuff, and at that point, I decided, well, maybe I would want to be a, a, a physician, uh, rather a teacher. Um, so what I had to do at that point was to get myself a job and I tried applying in a number of public schools but because I wasn't certified yet I wouldn't be able to get hired. So I drove down through, uh, through New Jersey, stopped at Don Bosco Prep just as a, on a lark and uh, as I mentioned before I was met by Dr. Scanlon, he offered me a teaching position and that was 35 years ago. Uh, the, to be honest with you, the motivation to keep trying things was more fear than anything else. I, I really wanted to do something interesting with my life and something that would be helpful to others. And it started being a, uh, a physician, but, but that wasn't, wasn't quite what, it, uh, what I thought it would be. And um, I didn't find anything in the, in the Air Force or in, t in selling pharmaceuticals that would meet the need that I had to, to be helpful to others. And it wasn't until I got really involved in teaching uh, that I found that this particular uh, interest that I had could be, uh, could be satisfied. And, it, ever since that time, despite the ups and downs and perhaps the, um, you know, the, the lack of notoriety that sometimes goes in with teaching, being in this particular uh, in this profession is, uh, is incredibly rewarding and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. But one thing I've learned from all of this is to, is to never think you know the answers and to never give up. And uh, you know, through those four or five years of searching for what I wanted to do with my life, uh, one of the things I, I learned right away is sometimes you think you know what you're going to do with your life and you may get on a certain career path and get knocked off it or find you're not interested. Well, the one thing you don't want to do is to give up and it's very useful to ask for other people's advice and the very, very most important thing I think is to follow your heart. And maybe that's something I didn't do those for, during those four or five years. You know, I was thinking of doing things that that other people thought might be important or, or that other people thought would be good for me. But, you know, all along I really did want to be a teacher and getting the advice of Father Gannon at the University of Scranton was instrumental in getting me to realize that. Well, one of the things I, I would say more than any other is to, is to follow your heart. Um, it, it's very easy to get involved in, in studying something for the sake of making money or because you think you're going to have a great house and home and, and, uh, and, and plenty of uh, expendable income. And, and that's all fine and good, but ultimately when you get older and you look back at your life, if you can find you've contributed some way to the betterment of others, and I like to think I've tried my best to do that here at the University, uh, at, the, at Don Bosco Prep, um, I, I think that's the most important thing in your life is to follow what your heart says. And most of you will know, you'll get an inkling as to what really interests you in your life. Just try and marry that interest to a sense of helping others in the work that you do and the expertise that you attain, and I think that you're going to be a happy person because of that. Well, my current role at Don Bosco Prep is uh, it's sort of manifold. I, uh, I'm a teacher of biology and AP chemistry. Uh, I'm the chairman of the biology department, or the science department rather, um, here at Don Bosco, and I also uh, coach. I got involved in coaching very early on in 1985, where I coached uh, football and baseball eventually transitioned into coaching cross country in the late 90s and now I coach cross country and indoor and outdoor track. So I do those three things um, and I find it's incredibly uh, incredibly interesting for me. 
Um, it keeps me busy from the time I get here at 7 o'clock till the time I leave at 5, 5.30 in the afternoon, sometimes 6. If you're at a track meet, it can be 8 or 9 o'clock at night. But doing all of these things has made the, uh, the teaching profession a lot more interesting and fulfilling for me. If there were one message I could, uh, I could give to students is uh, don't panic if you don't know what you're going to do when you get out of college or even when you're going to college. I think a lot of us are all pushed into doing one thing or another or try, rushed into taking a major or an interest in an area. It may not be there with you and it may be for some people. Most people don't know. I didn't know and most of my colleagues don't know, uh, didn't know when they were young. It'll eventually come to you if you keep asking the right questions, you keep pursuing the right paths, and you never say no. Try different things, something will interest you, but don't panic if you don't know what it is you want to do when you get to college.